Well, welcome to our first episode of Rage Quit. Well, not really our first episode. Not our first, first episode, no. No, we revamped it, so it would be our first, uh... Not revamped, I did it. it's season two. Season two, there you go. Season two of Rage Quit. Yeah, season yeah. two, episode one. So uh, we did a few episodes for first season of Rage Quit. Uh, if you're just tuning in, the general premise is we usually cover video games, mm-hmm. like in general. Predominantly Sony, a little bit of Nintendo thrown in there. Yeah, because that's what I, my genre I play. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I've always been a big Sony fan, so mm-hmm. I'm always Sony on them. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to tweak the, the format too much, really. No, not really. I mean, <clears> we're <throat> kind of figuring some stuff out since this is season two. Kind of figuring out where the the chips lie. Yeah, so we're gonna be recording, obviously. On our YouTube. Perspectives off. Uh, so this podcast will be up on YouTube. There'll be a playlist to watch for that, which mm-hmm. will be nice. And then uh, you can also get it in podcast services. Where yeah, I'm not podcast. quite too sure what podcast services. Are I'm gonna watching. be using uh, lives in the host. Oh, okay. Lives in, I think is how you say it. But uh, it's, if not the oldest, the oldest podcasting, like, service. Mm-hmm. And I posed the question on uh, Twitter, uh, where you can follow Ariel and I, actually. Yeah. I'm at Mer Hobbit. I'm at Anthony R. Schultz. He's got to be all professional, no fun, whatever. Mm. But anyways, I posed a question on Twitter, since we were going to be rebooting a lot of our podcasts and videos and stuff like that, and swapping Platforms out and hosts stuff. and doing different things. All sorts uh, of fun's happening. Uh, what would be the best place to host podcasts? And uh, it was almost unanimous. Those ones. Lives in was like the main one. Okay. So I'll be hosting through there, but that filters on out to everything else. It'll be iTunes, um, Google Play, you know. Yeah. The basics. You're, you're more the face for that now. I just kind of like, hey, he's cute. Yeah. I'm not much of a podcast. Twitter t- tweet terp. I, I like Twitter. I like the interaction. I do too. I li- I'm liking it more and more now, way better than Facebook, but I'm still. I haven't been on it that long. Yeah, and I haven't been on it a long time either. So it definitely like you're, learning curve. Yeah. You don't use it regularly. It's kind of like, say. yeah, you're like, you asked me to do something like tag it or share it. I'm like, I don't know how to do any of those things. <laughs> I just like the interactivity between, like for something like this, like if you want to talk to like a games writer or composer or director, like you can reach out to them. I mean, they won't always respond, of course. But no, like, yeah. You have a good chance that they will. Nine times out of ten, we pretty good and normally get a good response regardless. It's like their 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 page or whatever the situation is, but yeah, I mean, it isn't even just like the brand one for some of these games. So some oftentimes of them it'll personal. be like that individual that did the music for whatever game will reach out to you because you're like, or hey, listen to this own. soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I listen to so and so's music for this game. Like, I think you should check it out. And then it's like that composer will be like, fuck yeah, you're like, hey, <laughs> and then respond back. You're like, oh okay. And sometimes you'll get a chance to. Uh, talk with them more in depth or it'll just be that but i like that it's, it's a lot quicker than like facebook facebook is so like secured and not necessarily family orientated but it's i don't know yeah it's I'm lost its luster in my opinion it has i'm liking uh, twitter a little bit more i'm always finding myself checking twitter more than i am for granted like my entire family's still on facebook it's kind of why i keep it yeah which makes sense i mean there's a lot of like because i don't even have facebook anymore but um Family members that you like, vaguely would talk to. I don't know. I just have their numbers, so I just text them. True. Yeah. Fair enough. Plus, I was allowed to keep Facebook Messenger now. Which is weird that you can keep. So I can still message bull. people, but I don't see any of the bullshit on Facebook, which is kind of nice. Yeah, you get a lot of bullshit. Yeah, so I don't have to deal with any of that stuff at all. And and, it's... Yeah, at least with uh, Twitter, you can just be like, unfollow. Yeah, black. Good to go. Black. Fuck that. You don't have to worry about some family member or friend in real life that you know that's going to get pissed off at you the next time you see him at a family reunion or sure, at work or something. Right? If it's some dude on Twitter, you're like... <laughs> like, I did that recently. There was a guy on Twitter who spoiled uh, the new Avengers for me. Yeah, you told me about that. that I don't know that guy in person. Like, and he was very spoilery about it. He's the only person that I've seen on Twitter kind of in my, like, little circle that spoiled it. So I was immediately pissed off. And then secondly, block. My eyes was like, now I don't see from that dude again. Because he'll do it again. I'm sure he will. Yeah, if you He's did done it that. before. It's 2019 and he's spoiling, you know. The end game or Avengers end game. Yeah, you know? biggest movie of the year. When I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, Especially when everybody else has been super respectful. Because like, if you're in that kind of culture, they'll yeah. keep that to themselves a little bit. I mean, they'll, they'll talk about time, it in time day, frame. So. 
two, obviously. Yeah, but. I mean, if it's a year from now and I still haven't seen the movie, and that's I, on I me. see something on Twitter, yeah, that's on totally on me. Mm. But we're within a few weeks. Like, yeah, it's we've got wrong. a family. Like, we have a little little dude. He's kind of you know. Yeah, he's good for movies sometimes, but he's not unanimously good. For not movies. for a, what three hour movie? Yeah, exactly. No, he. He fell asleep through Venom, but there's no way he'd stay asleep. And there was through. hardly anybody in that theater, and so it's like Avengers is going to be packed, you know, mm-hmm. for the first few weeks. So that, that that would be difficult to pull off. It'd be one thing, like if you know, went super early in the morning on a random weekday. Yeah, or weeks Ollie was older, or we like procured a babysitter and made a thing of it. That, that's a different story, but it's still going to take time. Time, yeah. it's kind of what it takes. So I, I didn't like, like being spoiled. Parenting wise, I suppose you like being spoiled. You just don't like spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> no. Correction. Mm-hmm. All right, boss, what are we talking about? What's on the agenda? Okay, so episode one of season two of Rage Quit, we're going to be discussing uh, predominantly Days Gone. We have a couple other, like, topics that we'll, yeah, little, like, little mix in. in there. Uh, however, I've been cracking into Days Gone. You've seen quite a bit of it. Yep. Uh, some of the people we're talking about uh, via, like, Twitter and stuff, mm-hmm. I have briefly talked to, like, the, the composer, the writer, slash director... Writer slash director and composer of Days Gone. Yeah, one shares two hats. Two people, three hats. That makes sense. That's a lot of hats. No. (laughs) That guy was the writer and director. And then composer was obviously separate. Uh, I got to, like, kind of discuss things with them on Twitter, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so you could definitely dive into that, too. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, This will probably be a little spoilerly. I just finished the game last night. Yeah, I mean, I know some people are still playing it, but if you don't want it to be spoiled, definitely cut off kind of right now. It'll probably be a good shot and join us next time. Exactly, yeah, and then come back and listen to this one. Um, and I'll have it in the description and title, too, that it's going to be Spoiler. a little bit of a spoiler cast. Like, spoiler. We're not doing it intentionally. We're not going to dive like heavy into, into it, like, the details and stuff. And stuff but... There's going to be certain topics where we probably will, but uh, it's not a review by any means. No, it's just our talk about the game. Yeah, yeah, I'm just having a good conversation about it. What? I'm like the worst person to have a conversation about games with. I went, we did the notes for this <laughs> podcast together. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. So, uh, Days Gone, if you haven't heard, a uh, video game by uh, Sony Band, uh, which is a first party studio mm-hmm. for Sony, uh, just came out. And essentially it's a Open world action RPG mm-hmm. uh, with zombies. Zombie esque. Esque, yeah, not really zombie zombie. Zombie esque. They're like zombies. Like, it's a spin on zombies, which a lot yeah. of zombie There's like, even films and stuff. Yeah, do they do a little twist, twist on, on their own zombies. Ostensibly, they're zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, one of the things we want to dive into was like how they kind of did like the differences between zombies. Like, yeah, just there's not general. just a zombie, there's different types where, like, you know, the kids are called newts, which is kind of creepy. And they're, they're, they're always together. They're not yeah. like all mixed intermingles. Like the, the newts are the newts, the freakers are the freakers. Yeah, then the newts are like, they're opportunistic. Like they have territories and like packs. And they know they're weak. And they, yeah, they know they're not very strong. And so they um, capitalize on if you show weakness, they'll attack you. Mm-hmm. But otherwise they won't. And if you attack them, they'll defend themselves. Yeah. And they'll start to attack you. Yeah, the, kind of the freakers just attack to attack. Yeah, and they're, those are swarmers and bleachers. I didn't know there's even specified ones of that one. So, yeah, freakers is, like, the overall name for, like, the zombies, the zombies or the yeah. outbreak that goes on in this world. Mm-hmm. But uh, the bleachers are, like, the white-skinned ones. They're, ble- oh, they're the bleached bleach. out. Yeah, okay. And then the swarmers are the ones that are, like, the hive mind ones that are in hordes and packs and stuff. Oh, okay. Or have stragglers left over from hordes that have passed through. Yeah, the more weaker ones are swarmers. Yeah, ones predominantly you fight swarmers, mm-hmm. like, more often than not. Yeah, I like how they introduced finally the the screamers, the ones that scream and attract them, which is those were creepy as shit. Yeah, and it does like a crazy like a uh, like a rainbow filter mm-hmm. almost on your screen, like you're having like a auditory overload because it's so loud. Yeah, because they're attracting the other hordes uh, or freakers, which makes sense. And so for you as a human who's not attracted to that tiny intensity or sound, you're just like overload senses. Yeah, and it, it like there's a great animation with uh, Deke and the main character where he like clutches his ears, he falls to the ground at first, and it like stuns you, like you can't get away. I think that's very quickly like, the intent intent of the screamers to attract others and to kind of like stun you all of a sudden. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you're stuck there as a whole bunch of like swarms. Or just like coming and you're like trying to run away. What were those big ones called? Uh, breakers. Breakers. They're like, someone didn't skip leg day. Yeah, uh, they're they're <laughs> hulking brutes, and they they will attack other freakers as well. Yeah, which is weird. But yeah. and, uh, and the newts will attack freakers too. Yeah, because they're versa. racing because like, like, yeah. there's sometimes you come along and like there's freakers eating other freakers, and you're like, keep walking. Keep walking. Yeah, it's kind of a good, like, distraction, which is nice. It's, it's a weird animation you see because you're, like, not... You're not, not necessarily paying attention because you're, like, attacking them or self molding them and you're, like, really, like, they just tore that freaker apart and they're eating it in the... Okay. All right. Well, that's how that happened. Anyhow, keep that rolling. <laughs> but it keeps a good animation and you interested, though, because you're, like, oh, they're always just attacking humans or creatures or whatever. Yeah. They're absolutely. actually attacking themselves as well. It makes for an interesting dynamic, like, because that... I... As you play, you do come across that very often. Yeah, well, they, yeah, like, because they're... They're either attacking humans, or humans are attacking freakers, or freakers mm-hmm. are interfighting, mm-hmm. or, and then you're going through, so then you're a, either a distraction or not yeah. to the infighting that's already going mm-hmm. on in the world, so that's interesting. Wait, yeah, it's, it makes it definitely interesting to see, because it's not just zombies and a giant horde coming towards you, or the individual ones, you know, the specialty ones that are pop up randomly. Yeah. It's an interim mix of them, because I noticed with you, like, the hordes, especially later in the game, where you'll have the freakers, or the the breakers, the bleachers, and the, the fast and the reachers. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, they do do a great job of introducing other types later on in the mm-hmm. game. Like, further you go into the story, it isn't like you see all of them within At the once. first yeah. 10 hours. You're, li- you're like, fuck, there's more types? What the hell? Yeah, they sprinkle them in throughout, you know, a roughly 30-hour campaign, which is really cool. Yeah, but it's nice, too, that it's not just overloaded all of a sudden, a whole horde of Reachers and Berserkers are here, but it's like, you may just run into a typical horde. Yeah, absolutely. Without any specialty zombies, but then you might run into one with the... Freaker or the breakers are there, and then the reachers are there on yeah, top of there, it. There was an incident where there was like a, a, f- a fairly small horde, but there was a horde. There was newts on a rooftop, and they were already fighting. And then three breakers ran in, <laughs> and I was just driving by. You're like, keep yeah, going. and I wasn't actually going to stop at that place. Like I had like the Pink icon pain. selected to go there, mm-hmm. and I was like, I just kept driving. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not know? messing with this shit. Yeah, there is way too many freakers. It's a whole lot of open. Two tackles to go. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, I like like it, because it keeps it interesting. It's not just, like, with certain zombie games we've seen, like, oh, oh, zombie. Yeah. I mean, it's not, this game's not meant necessarily for a shock and awe scare, like some no, zombie games yeah. are. It, it's very graphically beautiful. It can be intense, for sure. Oh, yeah, there is more, moments. like, dirtiness or, like, messiness to the zombies, but I agree with that. It's not... Blood, guts, and gore is what they want to show you. Yeah, no, it's almost it's a, like the dichotomy between like evil humans and animalistic freakers who were humans. Mm-hmm. Like, which is worse, kind of a thing, and how does every group live together, or survive, yeah. or not? And it's the fact that, like, obviously with certain animations, you, when you like you're skinning the animals or whatever, there's a just quick animation and whatever. But it's not. And they don't even show it though. No, it's not gory. Like some of them it's are. It's like, like Deacon I've, from just like, down, and it's just a knife that's, swipe. That's it. That's it. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, I also like. I'm not a very big gore person. Like, yeah, I'm not either. I love. Else. I do love scary games. Like oh, the shock and awe. Like oh my god. Yeah. You know, I love. And there's scary some movies. gore I can like get behind Handle. if it's done right or like I guess tasteful. Tasteful, as possible. yeah. But. Uh oh. Dad died. Oh, that's fine. We're still recording, though. It didn't charge. Oops. Technical errors on our first show. <laughs> oh, well. Not a big deal. We'll, we'll film for the I like next it. one. I liked it right there. That was good. Yeah, no, um, we got a no, good setup. No, definitely. And so... Sorry what? about the interruption. Yeah, so, our camera. We, we were filming as we were uh, recording this separately. And, but uh, we forgot to charge the battery. <laughs> yeah, so that died on us. <laughs> but episode Oops. two, we'll have a video for it. Yeah, just kidding. Um, but no, what I like is the animation weird. It's not the gore. It's like there's tasteful gore for granted. Your body's getting torn up or they're going to hoard you and blah, they're eating you. But like when you're getting the ears for collection, you're yeah. not like literally wiping down and swiping ears off of bodies. No. Well, and I noticed that too. So this, a little tangential, but not, but like after you finish the story, you wrap up some of the other quest lines after the end credits roll. And one of them today, I told you about when you came home, mm-hmm. was uh, Lisa's storyline. Yeah, yeah. Was throughout the game. Yeah. And she rescues you kind of at the end, almost at the end of her storyline, and you save her a few times. Mm-hmm. You have this weird kind of relationship with her. But 
that's one thing I noticed. There's a cutscene when you finish up her story quest where she like pulls up to the camp that you're at and you meet her out front and you let her in because uh, the other campers aren't going to let her in because she's a because she had the the she's a scar. She looks like a ripper. A ripper, yeah. So, she which was is one of the antagonistic of groups yeah. in Days Gone. And when they show the bag full of ears that she has, which in that instance kind of shows like the growth of her as a character. Mm-hmm. Because before she couldn't take care of herself, but she's no. been out on her own and has gone through this like level of hardship, almost this kind of like Greek mythological like step up. Yeah, that's the only time I've ever seen where they show have shown like so, all the ton of the ears in a bag. Yeah, because you don't even see when Deacon gives them to trade. No, in. the only other instance is when you like trade them in is you can see when it kind of closes in a little bit you can see on the, the table, ears on the scale. but it's not specifically like you know animate ears you know what I mean? no yeah and there's no animation for like you said for like slicing off the ears for everyone no you ears. literally just walk over the body and there's ears there's ears yeah there's, there's a ears. little icon for it and you walk over the top of the you know freaker that you mm-hmm. killed and it takes it and it says you know plus one for swarmer ear or whatever yeah whatever the, the type, type is. it is yeah. but i like that per se i'm like i'm not saying i don't if it's done right it's nice but I, honestly, in a 30-hour game where you have to stop and cut off every freaking freaker's ear. That'd be cumbersome, yeah. I, I would cumbersome slow down the pace a lot. It'd be annoying. It's like when, what game were we playing? I hate the animation of you skinning the animal. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3? I think so, yeah. It was just a little too in-depth And you can me. skip it later on, but yeah. The, in the, the re, even, I don't know the original was like this. It probably was, but the remaster of Assassin's Creed 3, mm-hmm. yeah, there was like a more detailed animation. I and mean, I don't yeah. like, I don't like that. It's just like, for granted, I get it's hunting, whatever. I'm not an animal activated hunt. I don't care. I did, for me personally, yeah. I don't like that. Well, there was a very like sickening sound in yeah, it Assassin's was too Creed realistic. 3 that yeah. it was like, ooh. Or when you... It sounded like a knife plunging into a creature. And yeah, I was it is. Like, like, uh... They did a good job with realism, which those if games I wanted realism, are fairly realistic. I wouldn't play a real, but... I wouldn't play a video game. I'm <laughs> sorry. There are certain ones, like, that's a more historical... No, that makes sense. But I'm talking about, yeah. like, with this game, it's like, I, I like, even when you kill the, the, the dogs, not the dogs, the wolves and stuff, um, it's a quick, quick sound. It's not drawn out like some of them no. are. And I'm like, I hate it when you fight. And they make the wolves more animalistic in this game. Anyways. Then realistic, yeah. Yeah. The and only time it really like, kind of got you... Like, they're it, surviving and fucked up, too, just like humans are. Yeah, and then the only thing that really got to you is when he had to put that dog down. And it was meant to be that way. It obviously yeah. didn't show the animation, but he had to do it because there's no way of saving yeah, it. Yeah, they didn't show any of that at all. I mean, no. They did it like a fade to black. Fade to black. And it was meant to get your heartstrings out. That's what the point was. It wasn't meant for you to kill it because it's a zombie. Which is good writing, in my opinion. It is, I do. And I like that, but like I was saying, like some of the games you've played before, and I'm like, nope, don't like that. I'm not going to pay attention to this game. I just, it's too much. Yeah, it wasn't done tastefully. Yeah, it's just over the top. And I don't like that realistic sound of like animals dying. It's just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with it there. That's That can be a little over the top sometimes. I get why some game companies or games do it. Don't get but me wrong, I get it too. Other times, like, it's not necessary. This is a game where it's not necessary, and they didn't do it. So exactly. It was a like, good call. Good like, call, yeah. Like, I we, like how they did with the years, and I like how they did with the killings and the gores, like a, you know, cook splash blood, and they're dead. Yeah, you know. and there's only a couple of, like, the deaths that are in cutscenes, usually with bosses. Yeah, like, which makes I'm using sense. quotes, like, air quotes, bosses. Um, but it is to, like... Those people who are dying have done horrible things. And you want to see that. To, like, the know. good characters in the game. And, yeah, that that's used, like, tastefully for emphasis. Oh, you're like, fucking This person deserves yeah, to die. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're gonna die the worst way ever. It's like, what? The and so they show a little bit more there, but even then it's not, like, somebody being disemboweled. or it, It's nothing like that. No, not over the top. It's just, you see the quick slice of the throat, and you're like, yeah, get them. Yeah, that person killed when it's all these like people, or the, tortured all these people. Yeah, when it's another animation, it's just a quick stab in the back, or stab in the neck, or a quick slice across the throat. It's fast. Yeah. It is fast, yeah. It's not that satisfying niche when it's a boss quote unquote like you do a uh, boss that deserves it in a sense of the word it plays into the narrative that's why i think it's okay yeah it plays into the narrative it's not like you're like if it was just senseless like violence like if deacon was portrayed as just gutting people and yeah like he got off somehow on like murdering people or, or killing like people his one code where he won't kill women who are defenseless yeah he won't kill women or children like yeah. it's just and he protects them like he does he just does 
his damnedest to make sure that they're protected in this, you know, And it makes world. him even more angry when they get killed or hurt or something along those lines. You know, that's why the Lisa one was so strong is because she was a young woman and they were trying to torment her. And Yeah, and it reminded right. him of his wife's younger, younger sister, sister. Which we don't really know what happened to her either, but they didn't really elaborate, which it's kind of No, they, they showed that at the end. That's the character with the bag of ears at the end. And stuff. No, Lisa. I know they showed Lisa, but they didn't yeah. show uh, Sarah's sister. Oh, no, they didn't. They didn't elaborate. It just kind of was... I haven't seen Sarah since the credits rolled, too, by the way, which I don't know if you can go... I'll have to look this up and see if I can, mm-hmm. but... Cont- We're just at the end, though. We're just kind of diving into the cleanup of the game. Yeah, it's like, contextually, it seems like she's at the uh, Iron Mike's camp. Yeah, which Not at the other one. About bro- bro- fuck. Boozer takes over. He's just head of security. I know, but he... You're really not there, so... No, I think Ricky's in charge. <laughs> Yeah, because she was always like kind of in charge anyways. Because yeah. she was part of the council. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's true. Okay, so... I also that. liked, like, um, just to kind of wrap up our, like, zombie... Tangent. Not really tangent. I mean, it was a bullet <laughs> point. Uh, I like all the different... Uh, that the, the virus affects animals as well. Yeah, it's not And they're just... distinctly different. Like, wolves become runners... And they can run up to like 60 miles an hour. So mm-hmm. one of the big gameplay mechanics in Days Gone is you're on your <laughs> right, motorcycle. Yeah, trying to shoot them. And they, and you can get like, they have like audio logs you can listen to to learn more about like the freakers in general or Which is the world. Cool. But one of them talks about wolves like succumbing to the virus and becoming runners and how they can run up to 60 miles an hour and they, they're they strong tire. enough. They can also, while they're doing it, yeah, bite a, a tire off a car or a motorcycle and rip it off. Mm-hmm. Like, And so they hunt in packs like after people. Yep, that, they're wolves. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, later on, there's the uh, ragers, which are bears, because it takes place in like the Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. which uh, we have bears here. Yeah. Uh, they... Ridiculously strong. Yeah, they're, like... I, there's an audio log for that, too, but they, it's something ridiculous. They have, like, 60% more, like, muscle. mass, muscle mass, than their, you know, normal counterparts. And so, they're usually, like... I mean, they have, like, you know, patches of fur missing and barbed wire wrapped around them because mm-hmm. they've gone through things, and they have, you know, a fucked up eye, but they're, like, twice the size of another bear, and they just come <laughs> at you. <laughs> Well, then I like, too, that they have the freaked out ones, and then they have the normal ones kind of mixed in there that still will attack you, but obviously they're not nearly as strong, or they run away because they're just normal animals just trying yeah. to survive as well. Exactly. Well, and it kind of shows the evolution of the virus that it created these freakers, which is very integral part of the story. Yeah, exactly. And so it, it makes sense that both would be living side by side. Yeah. That it wouldn't be like all wolves that went extinct, so now we just have zombie wolves. Because all people didn't go extinct. No, that's what I kind of like too. Is like there's that mix. It's not just in certain zombie games where it's just people and or no animals or just zombie animals or you know specific zombie animals because they would be aggressive like yeah. dogs or something like that. It's always dogs, but you know, usually I mean, yeah. I want to see a zombie cat. That'd be legit. I'm just yeah, they, saying. Well, and they do have. Um, you know, bobcats are cougars. Yeah, but you don't see a tabby cat. I want to see a tabby freaker. <laughs> tabby. I don't want to see a tabby freaker. You don't want to see a tabby freaker. There's a deacon fighting like a nest of... Tabby freakers, Tashi freakers. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Men, we have a man coon. His name's Tashi. But... And he's like 25 pounds. And I can't imagine if he was bigger and stronger and more aggressive. <laughs> or ag- just aggressive, period. He's not aggressive as it is. But... No, he's he's a lover, not a fighter. But I'm just saying... It's zombie dachshunds. Oh, God. Zombie dachshunds. Zombie chihuahuas. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be funny. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> the problem is it would happen. It's just... <laughs> it would. I mean, hypothetically, yeah. In a situation like this, why not? If it affects yeah. animals, like, why not all animals? Exactly. Well, I mean, it even affects uh, birds in Days Gone. It's the criers. They're, yeah. like, they're crows. So. Yeah. Well, it does explain, like, with humans, obviously, the, the really young turn into the newts. The really old died because they couldn't see the ravages of the uh, mutation. Well, they actually said the newts are between the ages of, like, 12 and 18. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. not they're really like, young. They're, like, teenagers. Because then they really but young. But they are kids. Couldn't handle it either, so. But, yeah, it was, like, everyone under the age of 12 and everybody over the age of, like, 65 or 60 died. The, yep. Their virus, like, just ravaged their body so much that they couldn't take it, so they mm-hmm. just perished. Yeah. Everybody was caught in the in-between and became either a swarmer Freaker. or they survive somehow somehow yeah no, no kidding yeah definitely i like the, the the zombies are for sure i think 
my favorite part. Obviously, it's a zombie game. My favorite part of the game. Yeah. So. I also liked, uh, we touched base on it a little bit, uh, writing-wise, mm-hmm. uh, with the zombies, or how that affects the narrative, or even how the lore affects the narrative. Mm-hmm. I really like the, um, the build-up of all the characters, and the characterization just in general. Of yeah. Deacon, and a lot of the other, like, side characters, NPCs, mm-hmm. that he deals with. Like, there was a good cast of characters that were very well fleshed out. Yeah, you get the ones that you're like, oh, I really like them, or like them, oh, shit, they died, or oh, they're they're, they're still there, or oh, God, they survived, or... or... Yeah, even some of the villains, so, like, I... Uh, this is going to be spoiler, spoiler for sure, but uh, at the end of the second act, there's a, a boss, and it almost seems like it's the end of the game, but it's really only the halfway point. And you fight... Uh, the head of the Rippers, and he goes by Carlos, but his name was actually Jesse, mm-hmm. and Deacon, the main character, knew him before the apocalypse. Yeah, tormented him or something. Yeah, and I kind of touched base on that. I looked at it a little bit more. Apparently there's some conversations with Boozer, who's Deke's best friend. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the two of them that I missed. Oh, really? When? And it, it had been, like, leading up to it. That makes sense. But, uh... Essentially, what happened was, is Jesse was a part of the biker gang that they were a part of. Yeah. And he did something bad, like, fucked up to, um, I think a woman. Uh Uh-oh. Either murder or rape or or something along those lines. Something Something horrible. Really, really bad, which makes sense why Boozer and uh, Deacon would be, because his code is up, he, you know. So what happened was, is the two of them got really fucking hammered one night <laughs> at their, like, biker bar, and they went after him, yeah. and they, and apparently this uh, parallels, like, a Sons of Anarchy scene, which I haven't seen, but oh. I, I, get, I know what Sons of Anarchy is. But. Yeah, yeah. And they hold him down and take a blowtorch to his back, and they burn off his mongrels tattoo, his biker gang tattoo, because he's not a part of the gang anymore. Yeah, he's they toss him out. Them, Yeah. And then with that, coupled with the apocalypse, it fucks him up and makes him go crazy. So he starts like the rippers and stuff, and it's Which... why Boozer and um, Deke like hate him so much. Like, they already dislike him, and then... He started this freaking cultist, and it just makes it worse. Yeah, and then the, the same cultist specifically attacked Boozer in the opening of the game and burned his arm, and he ends up losing it. Well, yeah, and the fact that they had to go through this camp, and, like, there's this woman, and her legs are mangled, and they're trying to sacrifice him to the Freakers, and... Yeah, and they torture people, and they cut him up, and, yeah, they feed people to the Freakers so they can become Freakers, and just it's all sorts of shit. shit. Yeah. yeah, it's one thing to have, like, <laughs> rapists and anarchists and all this, but then on top of it, you get worshippers who worship the freakers and are just doing, like, even yeah. worse shit. Because he was already a fucked up dude doing evil shit when everything was real. And then when everything goes to shit, like, he made it a hundred times worse. He took the opportunity, Well, I guess. it's like when Lisa freed you when you were captured and they knew it was her, and this one uh, ripper was like, going to do horrible stuff to her, you know, saying they'll never find your body, no one, you know, they know what you did, you know, you're you're screwed. Yeah. So, it's just like, and then of course, he he's one of the cool animations that were much deserving that got sliced. Oh, yeah. No, and that was a good boss battle, and I think a, a good way to, um, I don't know. Not in a good way, but it did build up that character and explain what was going on. And it made it real. Like It did. It, 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 this that person was evil and fucked up to begin with, but it, like the the line of reasoning to how he became a villain in this like post-apocalyptic world it. made sense. It wasn't just like, oh, I cut myself, now I'm an evil villain and I have this cult. And it was like, oh no, I actually had an intimate relationship with the main character mm-hmm. before this all went down. And I was kind of crazy and unbalanced to begin with and did horrible shit to people. And this just gives me an opportunity to be more unbalanced and crazy and take advantage of crazy people. Yeah, and so, and then you feeding off that for, you know, two years and building this cult and, like, torturing people and stuff. Like, it, that character's built up as well. Even yeah, exactly. Though, even though he's evil. He's like, evil, yeah. It's good characterization. Well, it's like with... Or character building. Schizo, it's like... He's, Same thing. He builds up to be this just downright awful person, and just, just and he always kind of thought. But there's also moments of like, like, oh, he's redemption. kind of a nice guy. He's helping out. He got you the, the dynamite and stuff like that. But then he just ends up being just a douchebag, pretty yeah. much. 
and uh, and underestimates Deke and all the good people mm-hmm. trying to like you know save what last of like life, bit yeah. of humanity is left. They're just trying to live. It's not like survive. They want a life, and it's just like he's making it worse because he was attacking everybody. He was attacking everyone. And the funny thing is, he was so against the Rippers, but then he ends up aligning with them. In the end, it's like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. He's oh, like, yeah, with Carlos With Carlos and stuff, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. He's like, he's like, oh. I actually me. got that line of reasoning, because he thought that he, I don't think he thought that they were going to come and attack the camp. I think he thought if he, he could win-win, if he gave them Boozer and Deke, mm-hmm. it would be done. And then he could get what he wanted. Yeah. And then he could get these two fuckers who he didn't like out of the way. Yeah. I don't think he expected them to fight the camp. I don't think... I also think, though, that he didn't feel any remorse for what he did. Oh, no. I don't think he cared that they attacked the camp. And killed innocent people. But I don't think that was his intention. Like, I think he bought into Carlos's, like, offer. yeah. Yeah. And it makes... I guess it makes sense in the long run. But at the same time, he still just turns into this evil bastard and... Oh, yeah. He makes things far worse for... Deacon, especially and in the right. end, like, you know, when he joins the militia and stuff like that. and Yeah, kind of sells him out, like. Well, and not even really sells him out. He makes up this horrible lie and freaking. Yeah. Tries to get him hung because he's pissed off at him because he got kicked out of the other camp. Because he fucked up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, uh, well, and then Iron Mike fucked up. Well, yeah. Because he lets Schizo go. Because he's trying to be. He should have gone through a trial. Iron Mike's trying to be too human. Yeah, he and no fight. He's a pacifist. Yeah, and, and that doesn't like help a, a pacifist. World. Yeah, in a, a post-apocalyptic setting, doesn't seem like it's going to be a great idea. No, you do trials and stuff, and they get sentenced correctly or whatever. The that part made was. sense. I bought into that. Yeah, but then he just lets him go and kind of like, circumnavigates his whole council mm-hmm. and like yeah, initial his whole thought council, process. It's not just just it's not just him. He's not the main leader. It's just he has a council for a reason. He just said fuck you to everybody and let the guy and just go. let him go and said that he escaped okay, because he knew that he would have been sentenced to death. Yeah, he knew that they they wouldn't give him mercy, and he no. wanted mercy, so he took it into his own hands. But and it kind of fucked him in the long run. Undercuts his whole idea of being a pacifist because it's like you're, well, you're actively partaking in something that's mm-hmm. not pacifism. Like you no. to make your own decisions. It's like that's still an act of aggression. Like, it is. It's an act of aggression towards all the other campers. camper safety. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it ends up attacking him in the long run again because Gizzo takes over. And Iron Mike ends up getting shot, shot and, and dying. Killed, and yeah, like, because of it. And he kills more people in his camp. Like, it's like, dude, you should have just done the right thing. It's like, yeah, he needed a trial, but let yeah. the chips fall where they lie or whatever yeah. the scene is. So, well, and he would have. I mean, even if they had granted him mercy, he, he would have been in prison, prison for the rest of his like, life at that camp. So it's like, regardless, he would have been safely watched instead of out in the wild causing, causing all this trouble. trouble and causing more mayhem and murder and death and chaos. And Boozer's another really good character, though, that kind of fits into all this and all of these characters. He's Deacon's no right hand man. <laughs> no, yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> he loses his right hand, but. <laughs> Uh, I like that kind of build up because he like he loses it a little bit when he's suffering from his infection. Because he got blood poisoning, aka yeah. which you know very well about. Oh yeah. And I like the fact that he kind of like three sixty or one eighty day where he's like you know it could be like oh what was me my arm's gone and he's just like joking in the bed we'll have to play piano again no really I'm great at chopsticks <laughs> yeah. it's like do little hand motions to it and and yeah he kind of it's like Deacon helps him out quite a bit to get through that like, well, he's medically and, and like it's mentally like you know he gets him a puppy because he was even that dog scene is like it can't hurt him because he's an animal lover and yeah he did everything to get him a puppy and but then it's like afterwards he's he's in Deacon's Corner because of it. Like, mm-hmm. and he had been for the last two years, but he... He's even more because he's a compassionate person. He's not become hardened by this world. He has to do what he has to do. Yeah, just but like Deacon. But if he can get away with, not necessarily letting people go, but not having the cause harm, he won't do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, even, he seems like a little, like, self-sacrificial... A lot of the time, especially with all the stuff he does for the camps. Camp. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, the thing I like more is when they flush uh, a boozer out is when you find out he named the dog Jesse, which is his uh, deceased wife, of all things. And I just thought that was pretty neat that they kind of did a uh, homage to a character that wasn't even necessarily there. It's just the fact that Boozer actually had a wife and she died. Yeah, and they 
they've discussed that. Yeah, I mean, it, it flushes him out more and then see how he can relate to Deacon. And why he's having such a hard time because he lost Sarah. It's like, he gets it. He lost his wife. We're going to not in that way, but he still lost very his wife. Very similar way, yeah. You know, in a really hard, bad way. Yeah. It's like, you know. Well, for the longest time, Deacon doesn't know how he lost Sarah, though. He thinks that she's dead for the yeah. same reason. So. Yeah, exactly. But and when he gets that sliver of hope, he takes it when most people wouldn't. And that's what Bo- uh, Boozer says. Boozer. <laughs> 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 um, Boozer you know, it's like, encourage you, like, grab that hope. That's all you have. If you can hope, then hope. Yeah, and there's, there's several other, like, side characters that definitely have a part and develop personalities as well. I think the ones we mentioned, though, are probably the most in-depth. Yeah, because you get, like, Ricky, and she's got that small bit where it's like, you know, she tries to kiss Deke, and he's like, no. Yeah, no, I still haven't, you know, given up on my wife. And he, know. and she kind of, like, even more mistakenly says, well, I'm not married, and he's like, really? Yeah, because she's with uh, the doctor. Yeah, Addie. not thinking what she's saying, kind of a thing, which people do. With a it. Lot. That's re- very realistic. Yeah, that's so. very realistic, and it's like, oh, if there wasn't a chance. Of... <laughs> and burn. Well, this is one part I forgot to tell you about when at the very end of uh, Day is Gone, when you're mm-hmm. rescuing Sarah again from the Colonel. Um. Oh, it's actually right before you're you're escaping with her mm-hmm. before you find out Schizo's there. Yeah, and has been uh, you know Beating privatized lies, into yeah. this army. Um, the other scientist, mm-hmm. the, the chemical engineer mm-hmm. Weaver, uh, he sees you and Sarah trying to escape, and he's talking to like two other uh, like privates mm-hmm. in the militia, and he distracts them so you can go buy him. Oh, that's awesome! Which, it's like, he had always been kind of antagonistic to Sarah. Yeah, because she shot him down. Yeah, and they had kind of like, you know, rivaling schools of thought for how to, like, defeat the the Freakers, whether to treat them or just to kill them. And he seemed to be, like, the Colonel's favorite because he wanted to kill him in mass and figure out how to do so. And Sarah was always a little behind in her research. and he's trying to... Trying to save him, Yeah. yeah. I thought that was really interesting. That was something that a character built up a little bit for me. And you rescue him at the very end of the game. Schizo takes him hostage and you save him. Nice. That's and cool. then he becomes the head of the, the camp there at Wizard Which is Island. a good good head there. Good person there. Yeah. And you do a lot of uh, jobs for him, uh, like post-credits. Yeah. Which is cool. I like that the world opened back up post-credits. I was not necessarily worried about that, but a little bit. I was a little worried about it, but... Yeah, again, going back to, you know, Twitter, how we opened it, there were so many people that were, like, platinuming it and, like, talking about it loosely, not mm-hmm. giving away story beats and stuff. No, but it's like, I had a good hunch that it opened back up somehow. Yeah. And the way it opens up and the way it closes off, it actually closes off twice within the narrative, and then it opens back up completely at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh Makes complete sense. Yeah, like, it worked into the story. Yeah, you'd go back to Iron, Iron uh, like, whatever, Iron Mike's. Camp, camp, yeah, which you were, I've grown accustomed and, and basically been adopted into. Yeah, so it makes sense why you take Sarah there. And you couldn't go back, so like when you cross the mountains from Iron Mike's camp to the militia's camps, you can't go back for the longest time. You have to wrap up that whole area mm-hmm. until you get far enough along the story where you get captured and Schizo rats you out. Well, then, how they worked it into the story was, is the the militia led by the colonel, that tunnel that they kept referencing that nobody could pass through, he organized the whole militia to clear out the tunnel. Okay. So now I can go back to that area mm-hmm. through that tunnel instead of the pass. Okay. Which is always just a cutscene. Yeah. Which makes sense, then, why you could be able to go back and forth. And then you couldn't go back until you defeated the colonel. Well, that makes so you got sense. far enough yeah, in the story... Totally. So you could take that fertilizer bomb truck and blow up, essentially, and defeat the militia. Mm-hmm. And then it changes hands. It's yeah. not evil. The militia is not running it anymore. So now you can go anywhere. Yeah, and because it it's not... Everything. Well, it's not that it's ran by the militia. It's not ran by someone who's batshit crazy. No, the militia disbanded completely. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had no ranks, no nothing. They tore everything up. They burned it. Well, so. I mean, like I said, they're not being ran by somebody crazy. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I... Colonel's another one that was, who ran the militia, characterized very well. Mm-hmm. Very... Did he die or no? He gave you a ring back. No, the, the colonel, the head of... Oh, no, the colonel, sorry. Wrong, wrong person. Right, I wrong that person. was the captain. Captain yeah. Corey's alive. He goes to Reno, which they seem to talk about quite a bit. So Rain's I'm wondering, yeah, uh, either story DLC, whether it's 
I don't know, Deke and Sarah going to Reno and visiting or something along those lines, mm-hmm. or even I would play as yes, Captain Corey. That'd be cool. Yeah, he's like, a good character too. Yeah, his even like his like aesthetic, like the things that he wore and stuff, and how he conducted himself and how he held himself. He's very similar to Deke. Yeah. And I I would totally play. Oh yeah, him. that'd be legit as hell. Yeah, and so I, that would be kind of cool. Or even for you know, a Days Gone Two, maybe there's somewhere else in the country. That'd be cool. A deacon and Sarah are traveling. Or... Trying to cure it. I, I hope they keep Deacon on as a main character. I do too. I really liked his development as a character and like that all of that. It's just like See, and some people said he was flat. That really? he didn't change at all. I no And I thought he did. No. I, I feel like it was subtle, but I feel like it was well, intentionally was, subtle. Yeah, and he was really kind of inten- it was more intellectually uh, done and he's more set in his ways in a sense of the word because he's such a good developed character already so the subtleties that you get or like you know him breaking down for when Sarah calls the newt a kid it's a kid it's a kid it's a kid and he's yeah. like you know I've been through this shit for two years and there's nothing never even thought about it yeah to me you're still human and that changes his perspective you know these still are people in a sense as much as I don't want to admit it and the fact of like not running to run or be a part of camp no. Just to be a drifter. Yeah, he just. But didn't. he he does. He's got good stake. Yeah, exactly. You in know. a very specific camp, it creates Ex- a, a exactly. revolution. He does. He does create a revolution, and you know, develops then that way where it's like, or loser freaking becomes a head of security. And, and is like, at a camp. They're, not, a they're camp. not really drifters anymore. But they develop the the characters to where they integrate with the camp. They're. There for that camp specifically, not just to help Boozer, because they could have left. Like, oh, yeah, they could have left. Easily. Well, they didn't. Yeah. They came back. Yeah, and I feel like there's a, a change there, too. Or, like, why even start a revolution? Yeah, why? Why Why would it matter? I mean, I feel like he could have just let him duke it out and left that camp to its own demise. Or him and Sarah could have easily just left. Him and Boozer like... could have just, like, snuck in, stolen Sarah, and left. Exactly. He's like, fuck that shit, we're out. They could have probably snuck in, killed Schizo, and... Left. And, and taken le- Sarah and left, and then gone to Reno, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But he didn't want that camp to be attacked and slaughtered either, so he yeah, knew it's... that it had to be all or nothing. Yeah, exactly. His development of a character is the development and his caring for people still. He tries to be cut off, but he still cares. Yeah, that's you know. how I feel, too. Especially when they talk about, like, him and Boozer's past, where they, I mean, they were essentially slave traders and stuff before, mm-hmm. I mean, just to make money. They didn't really think about people anymore. They didn't care. Yeah. Like, and for granted, it was just a work camp. I mean, they they were enslaved, like, technically. Yeah, slave but, or sexual slave or something like that. They're just No, but they, they were serfs. Like, I mean, they were working. They paid their way. They were protected, but they were they had turning people over yep. to a work camp. And instead, he develops, he's like, oh, shit, what am I doing? No, go to this camp. It's much better. You know, you'll be taken care of, especially when he kidnaps uh, Lisa, uh, or saves Lisa again and tells uh, Tucker she died. Instead of turning her over, she tried to turn her over into someone to take care of her. And I feel like he makes just, like, you know, a hundred of these small little decisions that do progress his character. It's just that... They're too Without context, you don't... If you're not listening to the conversations that he's having with other characters... You're just trying to drop this person off so you can go to the next bad, do this, do this, this. You're just like... Oh. You kind of, yeah, you, you, you miss it. Like, you miss it. Like yeah. you said, you missed the conversation with Boozer and Deacon about Jesse. And I'm like... Yeah, and I didn't even think anything of it. But or you may like, have heard Once it, I, I read about that, I kind of like, vaguely oh, remember. Shit. Yeah, and they like, actually... Oh, that's the same guy. did talk about it. You just didn't realize. Because you weren't paying attention. You were trying to get to your next thing. And when you and at that moment too in the game it w- would have been early on in the storyline it just seems like you're running errands for camps and stuff you're and not you can't quite tell where it's what's going, going you think just the main storyline is only going to be oh, I'm running finding Sarah. camps and that Sarah's still alive or something yeah and that's it, it and it's actually the development of the, of the camps of the characters what you do for them how you do it and your character itself it's subtle yes but is it done well. Which I think kind of wraps up our next bullet point, too, and talking about the structure of the narrative. Like, yeah. I think what we're describing is it's all kind of interwoven with one another. It is. Uh, all these side characters do interact and intermingle with one another. They fill out each other's backstories via these conversations. Mm-hmm. They make decisions throughout the story that they regret mm-hmm. or they think are the right decision. Yep. Or they come back to haunt them, even though it is a right decision. And it may be subtle storytelling, but I, I like the fact that it's all kind of built in like a ball of yarn. It it's is. all woven when into one another. Like, it's not, somehow. It's, it's a spider web. You pull one string, you know. Yeah. Other things may shift. Other things may not. I mean, you, you don't really know. Well, it's like know, you save but... that 
one young kid who Jesse, I think is his name. No, something, I remember. Oh, uh, Taylor. Taylor. And he's a drug addict. And he. And you up, know he's a drug addict. And you're but trying you're trying to, to, to do the right thing. And he ends up killing the doctor. Yeah. Because he's a drug and, addict. And the doctor's a nice guy who knows more about you than anybody else at that point at that camp. Exactly. And tries to help you. And you. That was up, heartbreaking. You, he ends up dying and you end up killing him. Well, I want to. Deke's good friends uh, towards the end of the game is Captain Corey, and he is distrustful of him because he's wearing his mongrels ring. So he thinks that he did something to Sarah or to they, get that ring. Or uh, he, he doesn't know, know that. Yeah, no, at the time, and then he realized Sarah's alive. But did they hook up? Did she? Yeah, is there some infidelity there? Because they because he asked when he was on the bike. So kind of not really nonchalantly and not very good cover. What happened to my ring? Yeah, even though he had already seen it by that point and knew where it was. Yeah, Yeah. and then she's just like, you know, oh shit, you know, we have to give up our jewelry, da da da. Which happened to Deke too when he joins the militia, so it all makes sense. sense, Yeah, but then he's like, (laughs) you fucked a guy? Yeah, kind of, is what he's asking. He's basically asking. Which is subtle, but it's it's totally him asking. Subtlety is not his key sense of the word. Yeah, well, I mean, he lies the entire time he's in the militia. No, I know he lies. Skizzle's the only one that outs him. He does a pretty damn good job. True, true. Because he says he's from, like, the, the, the salt flats and straight stuff. Straight up, this, just, like, this is the only one part that irritated the shit out of me. He's got a giant neck tattoo that says Sarah. I am so sorry. Who the fuck is not going to see that? They also don't call her Sarah the entire time, though. No, I, I, I think that's what that little twist was. She is always to everybody else. The witch. The witch or uh, Captain, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Whitaker. Yeah, Whitaker. No, but I know, but the people who know that her name is Sarah, the smart ones, like the colonel and what's his face. Colonel's batshit crazy. Okay, but the dude was Captain the one figured it out. And so did the other lieutenant, the chemical engineer. I know, what I'm just saying. But I think that could be explained. I guess so. Yeah. Fine. The only thing that bothers me. Is that <laughs> only I agree, it's a plot hole, but I think it can be like explained away. It can be. I'm not saying it can't be. He's got his little collar off, and it's leaves. You can't really see it. Or those who it aren't paying attention, too. she's like the witch, and that's all she is. Or Lieutenant Whitaker, because you're in the army. Yada yada yada. Whatever. Yeah. Well, and she's very forceful about being called Lieutenant Whitaker or Lieutenant in the beginning. So. No, I know. I'm just saying in general. That's such a lot about supporting cast, too. So good there. Yep. Um, we just got, like, the minor ones, and then to move on. Yeah, so, setting-wise, we talked about it a little bit, but yeah. it's a gorgeous fucking game. It's, it's kind of what it comes down to. Snow, the rain, the... I've seen a lot of great stuff with people using the photo mode. Yeah. And getting really yeah, cool shots photos. and stuff. I've done a couple, but I don't experiment with photo modes in video games very much. No. So it's right, like, right. I, I can do it, but I'm not great at it. Uh, but I've seen other people who love photo modes in video games. You're just getting, like, these astronomically beautiful photos. You're like, damn. And the game looks like that. Like, I, I yeah, mean, we really don't does. have a PlayStation 4 Pro. We just have a regular PS4. And it, it Even looks on that. Gorgeous. We got an old-ass TV, too. Yeah, well, it's HD, though, so. Well, it's still old. But... It, it coming like living in the Pacific Northwest in particular. You're like, oh, I know that. Or, oh, yeah. I well, that. I talked about this in my stream today. So when I was like doing my trophy cleanup and uh, the streamed on Twitch, I it was. I don't know. It's a it's a little surreal because it it it's here and you can tell it's here and there, mm. you drive in places that I've been to. Exactly. Where it's like that looks like Crater Lake. Yeah, except yeah, it's got a giant ass fortress on it now. <laughs> like <laughs> hey, it looks just like that. Or I've been on that bluff. Yeah, like, exactly. Looking at you, 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 you're like you've like I've been there, done that. I've been close to it, so it's like tangible for us. Or like uh, where Copeland's camp is, it's very much like you know in the valley we live in. It looks like that. It's lush yeah, and green, green and campings there's, and stuff. Yeah, there's trails and rivers, and it's you know. Lush, and then you go to um, Tucker's camp. It's like barren. All outside of our city, yep. looks like that. I mean, that's the drive from here to Seattle or here to Portland. It's sagebrush. It's dry. It's dry. It's brown. It's tan. It's beige. Like that. That's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. But there's still water features. You still drive by a lake. It's just everything around it's bone dry. Yeah. And like all these like features are in the game. And then they're, you know, rendered graphically very beautifully. Like, exactly. And it looks like here, which is trippy. Yeah, it is very beautiful. I, I definitely one of the more beautiful games we played. Yeah, they did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and it makes sense. Like, Sony Bend is in Oregon. 
No, oh, yeah. It's Bend, Oregon. That's <laughs> I what, yeah, yeah. That. I feel dumb. Uh, and I likened to, and I told you this before um, in my stream, though, to uh, Infamous Second Son. Yeah. Which I played right when, uh, it was like right, it was like within a year at least, of the PS4 coming out. So it's been 2013, 2014 at the latest. Yeah. I think 2014. And that studio is based in Vancouver. Oh, okay. It's in Washington. And the whole game takes place on these couple little, like, sleepy Native American towns on yeah. the west side. And then the predominantly takes place in Seattle. Yeah, which we know. Yeah, it's like, oh, I've fucking been there. I've been there. I've, I've been, been there. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been there. And I had the same kind of feeling playing this game. For granted, it's more, like, landscapes and, like, broad strokes, say, for Crater Lake. Yeah, but still. But it's like, oh, yeah, I've totally driven through there. I've stopped here. I've done that. Or, you know. Exactly. It's yeah. not, not going to be, like identical because it's identical because it's been two years and fucking just shit storm oh yeah zombies. there's new things built and new things destroyed and um they did a great job with the the motorcycle deep bike oh yeah it was badass like i've seen some people kind of complain about the handling of it like how it actually mm -hmm. like logistically drives i if people are gonna hate this yeah. I'm, I'm gonna liken it to Watch Dogs. Everyone hated, hated, everyone hated the first Watch Dogs anyways. <laughs> and they hated the driving in that game. They even drive it a lot. But if your skills are really low, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it handles like shit. But that is realistic. Like, if you yeah, can't drive I very well... If I played that game, it would be shitty. Yeah, and I feel like people just wanted to hop in and have, like, a driving sim built into this open world game. That's not the point of the game, though. And it's like, well, no, it, it has RPG elements to it, so you have to... Like, build up your bike so it handles better. Like, it handles 100 times better now than it did at the beginning of the game. Well, yeah, it's because you kept fought and all the cool shit. Yeah, and there's the RPG elements to it. Like, mm -hmm. you had to buy stuff to add on to it and constantly tweak it and upgrade it. Now I'm at the end of the game. It's, like, maxed out. Like, of course it handles a 1,000 times better, but, but why would it at the beginning of the game? No. Like, why wouldn't the opposite exist? Watch Dogs was the same thing. If you didn't upgrade your shit, it drove like crap. You had crappy cars to start with. That one, it was more about selection. Well, yeah, then building your... And so it was like, when you got bike. better cars, it's like the difference, like, does your Honda Prelude drive the same as a fucking Lambo? No! <laughs> it doesn't! Does a crotch rocket drive the same as a Harley? No. No, they fucking don't. And mm -hmm. so it was like, in Watch Dogs' case, like I said, it was more about selection or diversity. Yeah, in this case, it's about, <laughs> this is your bike, you better fix it. Yeah, you gotta constantly upgrade it. Like, and your character levels up, so why won't your bike level up with you? Especially exactly. since it's an integral part to mm -hmm. travel in this post-apocalyptic world. Exactly. And that bike's beautifully rendered, too. Oh, yeah. Like all the little tweaks you can make to it, mm -hmm. and it shows on it. Yeah, definitely. It's very, very beautiful. They did a good job. Good job, buddies. <laughs> uh, I think the last thing that we really wanted to touch on, though, for Days Gone is the music. Oh, yes. So we talked about talking to the composer of Days Gone on Twitter. Um, we got the digital deluxe edition. I believe that's what it's called. But it mm -hmm. came with a soundtrack. And you yeah. can get it on iTunes or Spotify or, you know, whatever you, wherever you listen to music. But kind of tying back to like the narrative it definitely the music especially the ones with a vocalist really hammered home the feeling at that time in that yes, scene they and they only did it like two or three times it wasn't over the top no it's him driving over the pass and it's like right in the heart and it's like it's yeah. not like uh they did it again when he gets back together with sarah like and it's mm -hmm. like that makes sense like those it's are not the like major beats to the game fallout where it's like the radio's playing all the time or it's like where uh yeah there wasn't like a radio playing far cry five with his radio playing and you know you get that constant music or vocalist yeah. it's these are specifically vocals for these specific points to drive home this specific feeling mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then the, the ambient more like orchestral like music on mm -hmm. top of it is great too yeah definitely like, it, it's that. beautiful all of a sudden they're like oh shit I'm like, there's a wolf bar and i were a freaker or it's intense music like something's about to go down yeah well and there's just even like more quiet like ambient music too that plays that uh, it's like subtle but noticeable still yeah exactly it makes sense and it's done tastefully yeah it, it absolutely is and it's like i mean you and i listen to a lot of like, our favorite soundtracks from, like, movies and TV shows and video games and stuff, like, regularly. Oh, yeah. And we have some on vinyl, even. 
uh, this is up there for me. Yeah, if they had vinyl, I'd straight up want to buy it. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, listening to Jessica Jones or, like, Castlevania and, like, <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Like, this is, like... Venom, even. Yeah. Just great Not like the music. Venom sound it's got it, yeah, from the movie. Yeah. There's a difference between what those two are called. It's like I can't soundtrack remember. versus cinematic. Like, yeah, like like official score or something like so, that. Yeah, 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 it's one of those. This is the difference between listening to like the the Movie. varied artist uh, soundtrack and the score. We're talking about listening to like the the score. Yeah, from to a movie. a movie or TV show or video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has a little bit of both. It's primarily the just the score though, which I've listened to uh, like cleaned up around the house. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because it's just great, great music. Mm-hmm. Did a good job. And then I, um, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but the composer mm-hmm. has done a lot of big like films and stuff too. Yeah, which so, is cool. Yeah, and he has him in his bio on Twitter. Look oh, it nice. Up. Look it up, Ski. Uh, da, da, da. Right. I think that's about it for yeah, Days Gone, to be honest. Stuff. So, once this posts, uh, we touched base on it kind of in the beginning. Uh, obviously, it was very spoilerly. If you've gotten to this point, you've listened to the spoilers. <laughs> so, there's no point in me saying it again. I probably will do a review write-up, though, and I'll do a video review that I'll post. Yeah, exactly. So, it makes sense. I'll be on a separate playlist on ASI, our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it there if you're interested, and um, and I'll write it. But Ariel and I will bounce ideas off of each other, and I'll have her like proof it. But we'll yeah. essentially co-write a review, and well, I I'll, have my ideas. <laughs> I'll write it up, and then we'll do like important. A, a video review <laughs> of it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we just kind of like hammered out days on in this entire first episode. I don't know if we can like really want to continue on with anything else. Maybe a little bit more, but it'll not be as in depth. Yeah. Um, so, Ariel and I have been playing, uh, Borderlands, the Game of the Year edition together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to, Stream probably time. on Fridays, like, we seem to collab the most on those days, but we'll do, like, Fear Fridays still, and we'll probably do some co-op games, like, yeah, and Fear, can, Fear Fridays, uh, super, like, midnight, one in the morning, because I work... It's late, yeah, so usually we get a more, like, international audience if somebody kind of dives in, depending mm-hmm. on where you're at. yeah. Um, or you can, you can always watch, um, uh, like an edited Fear Friday on YouTube. And there's a yeah. playlist called Hashtag Fear Friday, and it's at, uh, YouTube slash AS Inquisitor. Yeah, and then we normally try to co-op a game Friday day, like in the daytime. Yeah, and I think we're gonna, we'll probably primarily be doing, uh, Borderlands for a little while and Overcooked. <laughs> Those are the ones we've been playing, like, it, yeah, most I, regularly. And which is funny, it's like another topic, like you and I are talking about like game control, or I don't know if you want to not dive on this topic, probably next time is about the difference between people who play games, gamers, and people who don't play as often, and the different like, where I have to cut back the sensitivity for me to even play. Fair enough. Or like certain games I can't watch because I get vertigo. I'm going to say gamers versus watchers, which is not quite right. But we'll, well, I watch we'll, you play more than that. We'll hammer that out later. Gamers versus watchers sounds perverted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. The Peeping Tom episode. <laughs> I'm going to call that now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you check out my Peeping Tom episode? <laughs> no, it's audio only. Don't worry. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's all right. Don't worry about it. This is also going to be the audiogram for this, by the way, <laughs> which is going to be great. <laughs> Peeping Tom. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, All right. Anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll probably discuss that next episode. Yeah. The, I was just yeah, it just kind of popped in my head because we're talking about Borderlands and uh, with I, I game, but I game up like Game Boy and Pokemans and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I did a lot of like Game Boy Color games and stuff like that when I was younger. But yeah, but I, but I also really, had consoles as well. Yeah, I sure play like. N64. I had like a Sega Genesis no, and a I didn't NES have, and a Super Nintendo and all none that. None of that. Yeah. No. Nope. Fuck, we still got the Genesis hooked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the PS1, playing some old school games. And the Dreamcast, which I need to hook up so we can start streaming. <laughs> and or at least okay. recording. Recording, yeah, true. It doesn't have to be live. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely going to tackle that for Fridays. Um, let's say you can follow us on Twitch. We're at uh, AS Inquisitor on Twitch as well. So you can catch I us am? live. Yeah. Okay, I am apparently. 
Uh, but if not, uh, again, you can always go back to YouTube and watch all the old streams. Yeah, we, we post them there. Oh yes, uh, and they're all in an easy, accessible playlist. So oh, it's like yeah. th- there'll be a co-op playlist. There already is a hashtag Fear Friday playlist. Mm-hmm. Um, I mm-hmm. also divvy them out into you know like specific games that we played a lot. Yes, yeah. That so makes Borderlands sense. will definitely have one separate. Yeah, because we just started that game. Yeah, and I play uh, Borderlands Two. I stream that one as well on my own. Which makes sense. I mean, maybe sometimes I'll be there to watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gamers versus watchers. <laughs> watch my people down at the top. Uh, yes. Yeah, and Borderlands 2 I've been cracking into separately because I can play it on my PlayStation yeah. Vita. It's got a great... <laughs> you play when I'm sleeping. Yeah, it's got a great cross-save kind of functionality, which yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about on a later episode as well. Yeah. Um... But that one I've been going back and forth on. Really, so I get my like Borderlands a, fix if uh, Ariel's a, busy. A preview to our next episode. Yeah. We're pretty much wrapping up preview. This is what we'll be talking about. Pretty much. So we'll just kind of do like a, a closeout. Do you have anything you want to like add on or say? or? No, I think it's pretty much it. You know, I'm really excited for Days Gone. So you kind of wrap up, see what else is developed. For granted that the game's technically over, quote unquote. Uh, but what they'll do. Like, especially if they like going to do DLC, what are they going to do, and I'm excited to kind of hit topics of Borderlands to, for you and I, and kind of like more specifics into that, and kind of game, gamer versus watcher in a sense of the word, like what it's like to be someone who doesn't play very games very often, and what it's like to tackle those big different types of games, you know, like the big RPGs, or the ones I've seen you play compared to what I can even handle. Yeah, no, that's a uh... Very valid point. I think that's going to be a great discussion topic for episode two. Uh, I don't think we'll have a, a specific game, per se, like this episode had to focus on. No, this the next one's more just a general conversation. We're just super excited about Days Gone and how amazing it is, is why it's more indulged in that. Yeah. Like, the, the other, they'll be more sprinkled in and have topics like this throughout the oh, yeah. podcast. Well, we'll definitely be talking about, um, you, you touched base on it a little bit, but with the Gamers vs. Watchers <laughs> episode, uh, Borderlands and Fallout and shooters and open world games and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm sure this we'll be, be referencing more general, a lot of games. More general. But it'll be, yeah, more generalized. Yeah, this was just more specific to Dare Towards Days Gone because we just wrapped it up. We're super excited about it. It's a beautiful game. Definitely play it. And then our next, you know, I, I mean, we'll still have some episodes with certain games where like, oh, you know, we're just going to be like, an episode heavy specifically this game this one's like oh it's more general this game or that yeah. game's or exactly it's kind of the format of the show yeah yeah um i would imagine the next big game that we cover and i don't know what episode number it'll be because yeah. it'll probably take me a while to get through <laughs> it uh but it rage two. I would oh yeah that's coming that's gonna be the next big one because that one's almost out <laughs> doug's gonna get his tail swatted I would say uh, follow us on Twitter if you have any. Uh, if you want to reach out to us directly, Twitter tweet tweets. I'm at Anthony R. Schultz. I'm at Mer Hobbit. Uh, and also uh, hit us up on Twitch and YouTube and wherever you can find podcasts. So if you're already podcast. listening to this, you found the podcast. <laughs> if uh, but if you would like to watch live streams or some of our other shows or other content, uh, hit us up at Twitch slash AS Inquisitor mm-hmm. uh, or YouTube slash. AS Inquisitor. Yes. And we're give us a very, sub, drop us a comment, give us a very like. active on those. Yes. So, and I stream five to six days a week, and so there's plenty of kind of content. If you like RPGs, I do that. If you like shooters, I do that. If you like open world games, I do that as well. A little bit of everything. A little, little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then we got games where I play with you, where it's co-op, couch co-op, and yeah. Fear Friday, because I scream like a little girl. And so if Days Gone isn't your cup of tea... We um, got other cups of tea. <laughs> or whiskey I don't know what you prefer join us for the next episode uh, we're going to have more generalized discussion and you know maybe if we get to a Rage 2 podcast Rage 2 is more your cup of tea I'd yep. rather prefer that um, and then even further down the line I'm sure we'll be covering Borderlands 3 and you know other games so another general tr- conversation we, yeah. we got this covered exactly uh, the last little tidbit I want to leave you with is my co-host for On the Rocks <laughs> is about to be announced and <laughs> Got to do a video for that because yeah. we have a new co-host. This is my other YouTube channel. I'm still here. Um, 
he and I are going to be doing like a retro game or like nostalgic podcast. I think it'll yeah. be more video game centric. So we're going to have that going up probably within like the next month or so. Yeah. So check that out. I probably won't be a part of that one because I'm a part of this one. Yeah, it's whatever you want. Fair enough. I might sprinkle myself in there a little bit. Little, That's little, fine. little tidbits. It'll, little probably tidbits. Be, it'll probably be late at night, I would imagine. Yeah, if I work. With booze. If I, if I work, I ain't doing it. I'm sleeping. So, a little bit of a long outro, but on the rocks, uh, I review various liquors and spirits and stuff like that. Anyways, yeah. it ran for three seasons with the same co host. Now there's a new co host. Yeah. And we haven't filmed anything in like three years or something ridiculous. Oh, God, it's been three years. Yeah. Yeah. We are reboot. Well, not rebooting. It's going to be the same format, just an episode a week. Uh, a good friend of mine is going to be my co-host. I'm going to have a video for On the Rocks and detailing that and why. Uh, but we're going to start season four and start reviewing stuff. So a lot of these things are going to be like recorded or filmed in the same <laughs> evening. Uh, my co-host is very diligent and knowledgeable about a lot of things, but he's very busy. So we'll probably hit up like once a month where there'll be a semi-drunken nostalgic video game podcast <laughs> and then four episodes for On the Rocks for the coming hey, month. Hey, maybe sure it's the same one and in all these episodes. What happened? What happened? Just, we don't have it's my house. I'll just fucking swap out shirts. <laughs> he won't. He's fine. He's good. He's good. He's good. I'll do it just to make it seem weird because he'll be in the same thing every time and then I'll change. <laughs> I'll wear different hats too. <laughs> just because. Bow ties. But yeah, I do. have four bow ties. I do have bow ties. You do, but you never wore them because I wanted you to. I don't know. Good Not time. for sexual reasons either. Sexual bow ties. <laughs> that okay. should be a podcast. Right? <laughs> right that's Se- forget that. <laughs> sexual bow ties and more. <laughs> that should be our other podcast. We were talking about that. I'm we like were, it. We're <laughs> sexual bow ties. <laughs> well, I think that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Catch us next time. I'm dealing with sexual bow ties and peeping toms. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>